As I slowly go through the crawl of fasting and I see my cohort eating some sort of salty snack of a cracker. Dying for water that I cannot have and seeing this fool over here from his little escapade in Toronto leaving me on the island by myself trying to watch out for the league itself. Back in Welcome Montreal! Welcome to Calling Audible. Welcome to Calling Back Audible. in Montreal eating jalapeno cracker. Come on. <coughs> Yeah, thank you. As I'm trying to cough my way through this last whatever hours I have left of this fast. Uh huh. Uh huh. You've been coughing like the entire month of March here. No, but <laughs> I I can't drink water. Like I'm, I got a dry like throat. I can't do anything about it. I'm stuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing I can do about it. You know these rules and guardrails I have over here. So uh, yeah. All right. We have a. I believe we have a quick show today, Mo, because uh, Tuesday night. Uh, a night normally not reserved for FPF games. There are FPF yeah. games tonight, so we uh, got a quick one because you, my sir, are scorekeeping. Up in Laval. I forgot it's up in Laval. So uh, we do have Brent Blocker on with us today. Uh, Manu Alahua is supposed to be on with us as well, talk about the three at some point, or he is will he out? He'll be on with us. He'll be off. So is this Brent and I? You, Brent and I? Correct. Whatever. It's we'll, we'll, a pre game we'll uh, show here uh, on the. On the show. <clears throat> Of course. Is Brent uh, available yet, or is he still up in the air right now? Are we still waiting for him to arrive, or is he... That one is for Omar. Okay, he's right, not. fair enough. We'll wait for Brent to show up here. Uh, just a few things to look at. Um, again, that schedule playoff reminder is out there. So please check out the playoff dates. They're pretty much locked in, ready to roll. Uh, there might be a, a couple of adjustments um, that could be a factor in a good way. Uh, that we'll have Plan B and C in place for if that does arise in the coming weeks here. Uh, <coughs> number two, the spring registration is uh, going to be open very soon here, Iggy. Am I correct or am I incorrect with that assumption? I believe the first week of April, Mo. <coughs> so that you would be mean? April like, first 1, week of April. April 2, April 3, April 4, April 5. The well, first week of April. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, so the opening week of April, spring registration will be open up. Uh, the season will begin uh, May 12th, is it? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I'm coughing. You're eating. What the hell are we doing here? On a, on a, on a... May 12th, yes. I believe that's the <laughs> Monday, right? Yeah. Right. It's the Monday. So, no, it's the Sunday. May 12th is a Sunday. The Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And yes. it'll be a standard 10, 11-week season, not the... Uh, elongated 15 week uh, marathon we have going on right now it will go to the uh, middle of july with playoffs uh scheduled to finish august 11th and 12th uh, it would be two day rendezvous <laughs> and yeah that's pretty much about it otherwise uh anything else for league announcements here eggs no just again wrapping <laughs> up uh if you have someone with four or three games played and you have one or two games played uh make sure they they uh, show up to your game in uh, proper uniform. That's it. Okay, that's it for the show. See you next week. Um, Pretty so much. So, yeah, there you go. So, uh, spring registration will open up early April. Um, playoff dates are set, so please double-check that. Again, there are um, plans in place in case of uh, a couple of holidays that are coming up at the end of April that we do have uh, in place uh, for those teams who might be involved with uh, uh, those two playoff dates. And lastly, but not least, the uniforms, make sure you come in ready to roll. And, you know, as, as you said, right, we're in a position now. We're in the final turn of games. Some have one game. Some have four games left. And you let that uh, last run of uh, players to be eligible for playoffs, which is five. Just come ready to go with your roster with proper numbers and the whole nine and color uniform as well moving forward. Uh, Brent Bakken will join us soon. Um, in the meantime, let's start off with the division in the meantime. And uh, I believe Brent does not join us, I think it is. I no, not Brent just is. yet. He's going to be joining us for Division <laughs> 6 coverage, of course, as he has done yeah. uh, throughout the year. He's also yeah. going to talk and join a 35-plus thir discussion with us since he score keeps those 35-plus uh, games Monday night in St. Laurent. Okay, so let's start with Div 3 in the meantime until Brent uh, arrives. And uh, we'll kick off right here. So people are curious to know what is going on with the Div 3 playoff format. Uh, there really hasn't been anything revealed yet from our end of what – will be the playoff format it will be revealed soon uh we're doing a little bit of a tease in the lead up towards uh what day we're doing april 9th is when we're doing the unveiling or we're doing it earlier than that sometime right? next week so sometime next week dev 3 playoff format will be unveiled um a little a little bit of a hint can we give one hint um i think <clears throat> you can give a hint okay so 
It might be too obvious, though, your hint. Right, perhaps. so I'll, I'll, I, say I'll, I'll say this. I'm on the same this. wavelength. I'll say, I'll say this. It's going to be like a hierarchy of trying to move up the mountain. That's all. That's a vague hint, but it's a hint nonetheless, I guess. Exactly. Uh, we have we look, we look have the playoff format in place. We do. Yes, um, it is. It's something different, but it we're is. trying to uh, – because of the strength of this division and how great it is, we're trying to reward teams to make sure that we have the best p- matchup at the end of the day. Let's put it that way. The two I don't best think teams it play guarantees now. that, but no. I think it guarantees <coughs> a uh, – I, I, I think the way you've put it, Mo, is that it guarantees – oh, it doesn't guarantee, but it – it tries to eliminate divisional matchups and p- repeat uh, matchups that you've already seen in the regular season. That's another yeah. way of hinting at it. More or less, right? We don't want to have uh, two great teams knocking each other out in the first round, maybe. And maybe it happens in the finals, for all we know. But let's talk about Div 3 and <clears throat> what we have lined up here. So, Sharks Lightweight played each other. This past weekend, Iggs, and another one-point game involving the lightweight, which they lost the Sharks. Uh, did we learn more about Sharks in their win or lightweight in their loss? I think it's Sharks in their win because, again, as good as lightweight has been and, you know, that we've been talking about them as being one of the heavy favorites in the division, I'm not surprised that Sharks beat them. That's That shouldn't be shocking news to the div three world and and it wasn't for me and then looking taking an even closer look it was an overtime loss on top of it where like lightweight had all the chances to win right they on on their end they do score with uh i believe two plays remaining they score the touchdown have a chance to tie the game have a chance to did i get that right actually i think they may have yeah they they missed the extra point convert uh and Sharks being the home team, uh, strangely enough, elect to go second, which in my books is a mistake on the part of the captain of Sharks, whoever made that decision. My bet is that Corey Walwoski made that decision, the coward of, uh, of the FPF world. Um, he cowardly went second uh, because you should go first. You should go first and you should go for one. Uh, yet they gave that decision over to lightweight they go first they go for one they get it which puts pressure on sharks right forcing them to go for two and sharks get the two-point convert i believe it was noah groper coming away with the uh, the thrilling victory for them so all, all to say i think it means and shows more on sharks's end they've been you know win loss win loss win win loss they they've struggled to you know, maintain some level of consistency in their play and getting a victory over a heavy contender like lightweight was exactly what they needed. And then they go on in the next day and lose to wide open bar. So maybe I'm completely wrong with this, but to me, it was <laughs> sharks making a bigger statement, needing the bigger, uh, needing the win more than, than lightweight because lightweight, we kind of have this feeling that they already are a heavy contender sharks, proving that they can beat them kind of enter that conversation too yeah so so lightweight are now three and two games decided by one score or less so seven points or less they now play i think three games where the final score is the one point and win they're two and one of those matchups um they you know they're a very good team uh, lightweight there's no question about that uh but to lose a game like this and what could be a potential playoff matchup at some point if they do meet up uh, whether it's now or maybe in the finals for all we know um, it's a big loss because now you're not controlling your destination for the number one spot in your division. That belongs to Don Bougie now, who've now made up the lost games that they were behind and the games in hand, and now they're 6-1-1. One, and one. And for lightweight, they're in a real battle now with backyard bullies and for Don Bougie to get the first place spot in the division. Meanwhile, for Sharks, look, uh, this is a team, you're right, Eggs. They, they kind of started out of the, out of the gates, <clears throat> didn't play well, uh, inconsistent, and had a lot of question marks about them. And I think now with where they're at in their season and how it's kind of turned around for them, um, I thought it really turned around for them after the loss against Dirty Birds when they went and beat Infantry. And that kind of gave them a little bit of a, of a boost here. And then after that, though, they, they beat, that's what she said, by, by 16. That gave them a bigger boost. 
I think now, even with this loss wide open bar, they're going to be a playoff team that's going to be dangerous. And if they're clicking in all cylinders, I wouldn't want to face them at some point in the playoffs, whether it's now or maybe later on the road. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Sharks, like I said, big, big victory uh, over a lightweight, kind of a statement victory. But then a bit of a confusing loss against wide open bar. Uh, speaking with Corey Wolowski, you know, throwing three games in two days, uh, subbing in for hashtag NR in Division Two as well. He he was feeling the uh, the arm and the the shoulder right. uh, pains and and needed the relief. Didn't get it uh, against wide open bar. So in that case, uh, they're right now in first place, six and three. Uh, Bruins are, are are right now behind them with two games in hand. You look at Brotherhood <coughs> at seven to two with one more game left. They got I think monkeys coming up. I think at the end of the season. So, monkeys. Uh, or Ballers, whatever the team it is. The, the, the team that's owned on right now. I forget the name right now. Ballers? Whatever, whatever they're called, man. Hold on here. Let me get the name. My God, what is the fast Speed thing Academy. Done Speed Academy. You? Speed Academy. Monkeys, close. Ballers, and Speed Academy. Close. It is close. not close. It was, my next, it, was the next, it was the next word in my mouth. It was Speed this Academy. This is not close at all. It was the next word. Anyway, so uh, who's more likely to hold on to that first place spot in the division? Is it Sharks or Brotherhood? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, you're giving an either or I actually don't think either team ends up holding on to that, uh, that group, uh, division leader <coughs> spot. I think easy W I haven't looked at the schedule. I can really quickly. I think just based on their team and they their nature, already. they beat brotherhood and they, but they need to win out. Uh, oh no, sorry. They can, they can afford themselves one loss. Uh, but then need to to win out the rest of the way, which is a very easy W thing to do, even win the 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 last three games. And same thing with uh, with Bruins, but they would need to lose two of their next four games, which is also an unlikely scenario here. So, I mean, who's more likely to keep a uh, hold of their uh, of their uh, division lead right now? I I want to say Brotherhood because Bruins would need to lose two, but Easy W would need to lose. No, sorry. Uh, nah. I, I I look. I don't like either team to hold on to it, but I guess I'd have to say Brotherhood out of the two teams. But I'd say like a five percent chance they hold on to it. Yeah, I think Easy W likely to lose, right? But I mean, remember they lost to Griff Nation. Uh, when they many thought they would run Griff Nation off the off the turf and they lost by yeah. three to them. Yeah. And I think for for uh, Bruins they have a bit more runway to work with to get back. I mean the, I mean look, if they win a lot, they're they're the one seed in their division. There's no question about that. And you're right, they can they'd afford be, to they'd lose be the them. they'd be the one seed in all yeah. of Div three. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. Unless unless uh Easy somehow they tie and, and Dian Bougie gets the number one spot. But you're right. The Bruins have the chance to be the overall number one uh, for the playoffs. Um, so I think that the Sharks are vulnerable to lose at some point, more likely than than the um, than Brotherhood would, even with one game left. But I just think that in terms of the pursuit of this race here, I think the Bruins have more give uh, that they can lose one and maybe even two and still get into the first spot here. So I think Sharks are the team that's more likely to lose um, that grip on first place going towards uh, the final few weeks of the season. But on the flip side, though, you look at AF1, Air Force One. Are they are they a legitimate contender for Div 3 to win this championship this season? I don't think so. I like the record. I like the resiliency. I like the compete that they've shown going 6-3 and three in Div 3 when last year, what did they go, 1-9? Definitely wasn't 0-10. Maybe it was two and eight, uh, a struggling season for them. And to come out, you know, nine games into the winter 24 season with a six and three record. Awesome. Great. And, you know, especially after losing Manuel Arroyo on the, on the squad, they, they've only improved on it. Now, a lot of people have said Div 3 this year is weaker than Div 3 last year. Right, you have the mangooses of the world moving up into Division Two, Silent Ticklers. Right, these are now Division Two teams that are seven and one, seven one and one. Like, 
uh, top three teams in Division Two, right, that have moved up from Division Three. So uh, while the division has got gotten, I'd say slightly weaker, six and three is nothing to, to scoff at, and it's it's, but they're not legitimate contenders. They can have a playoff run that could surprisingly go three rounds deep. Yeah. But they're not that heavy time favorite. They don't do anything that is elite. They don't have elite defensive play. Their their biggest asset is their quarterback. But even then, you know, I'd say he's in the top 10, but in the, the 5 to 10 range of, of quarterbacks. And and there's, other than, you know, Jonathan Bigra, snapper for, for the team, the, the receiver set is not elite either. It's good. But it's not elite. So if, if you don't have one component that you're elite in, you can't be considered a, a, a contender. I mean, look, they, they lost a the brotherhood, they lost to your team, and they lost uh, a close one, I believe, uh, earlier this season. I forget who it was. That gets be really great as well. They lost by 10. Um, right. <clears throat> I think they're sort of in that, um, in that window of whoever gets to play them in the playoffs, you're probably doing – jumping jacks, somersaults, cartwheels, the whole nine of gymnastic moves because you're probably going to avoid playing lightweights, uh, Bruins, uh, EZW, Brotherhood, you know, whoever ends up being in those top spots, right? So I think in that situation right now for if for uh, for this team right now, for Air Force One, I think it's amazing that they've done really well this year. Great for the morale boost and all that stuff at 6-3. and three. But they are probably the more vulnerable of the top tier teams. That could be a one and done, given who they might face, whoever that team might be in the opening round of the playoffs here. So I think right now, enjoy the ride, but it's a bit of a cautious ride because that trap door can open up and they might be falling down to the abyss and be a one and done in the playoffs. As you say that, the thing is, if you're doing jumping jacks, thinking you have an easy matchup, be careful. Because that's when this team turns around and stings you. So just as as much as, you know, teams would be happy to face them. And trust me, this is a team that can make it a closer game than, than you think and give them credit for. Yeah, no, no they'll, they'll keep it competitive. I, I think yeah. it's, it's going to be one of those games where whoever they face, they'll keep it competitive. But I just think that in terms of the elite forces that they have across the Div 3 um, uh, ecosystem of teams, yeah. um, of, of the upper, upper tier teams, they might be the more vulnerable one because they don't have that same um, experience. They don't have the same wealth of, of talent, like alpha talents that can win it. But that's okay. Like You don't need to have talents across the board. As long as you have a good core in place, which they do, you can win those games. But I just think that they might be the team that you might circle us and yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind having them in my first playoff game and whoever that might be that faces them at some point here. Um, look, eggs right now, Div 3. I've enjoyed Div 3 with Manuel Arroyo. I've scored kept a lot of games in Div 3. But who's been the most disappointing team in this division this season? I'm going to say it's Kiss My In-Laws. I mean, 5-3, and three, three losses. I mean, the five wins is good. It's okay, but the three losses, unexpected, uh, at least from uh, my expectations. Uh, I mean, what do you what do you make of 212 points against? I guess that's okay after eight games. Uh, 260 points for, averaging a little less than what the what the team can normally produce, and uh, that's coming from uh, from my side of the ball. And I mean, I will I will especially in the the past week, playing Brotherhood. That is a great defense that now, now I understand where, where, why that team is seven and two while I've seen them play and the offense, you know, can be had at certain times. It's the, it's the strength of the team. And, and I knew this, but there's a difference between seeing it on the sideline and playing up against it. When, when there are three division one slash division two guys on defense, makes it very tough for uh, opposing offenses. Uh, they did an uh, incredible job uh, limiting and, uh, the kiss my in-laws offense. I, I, I mean, just from my own inner circle and my own, uh, my own headspace, I'd have to say kiss my in-laws. Do you agree? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not the most, uh, exquisite record they have. I'm going to go with infantry. 
as my team that has kind of underachieved. They're four and four at this point. They have um, quite the uh, attacking armory. When you look at the Submergent boys, uh, Nick Damalo, Kazaka has played. Ethan Adrian's a really good player in defense that we know him for. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Zach Stacy, we've we've been very high on him for the last couple of seasons as a quarterback, and we think that he could be. Uh, maybe the next, not the great one, but the next one in line of, of great quarterbacks in this league to produce at this point here. About four and four, I thought this team would have been at least, uh, you know, I'm saying five and three, if not six and two. Uh, they lost some close ones for sure. They lost by one to Brotherhood. Uh, they lost to, uh, they beat in Bruins by 13, right? So they've been sort of that Jekyll and Hyde team this season. Um, so you wonder, like, really, are they the best team? Because remember, they beat lightweight. But then they got cracked by sharks. So really, what are we looking at from the uh, infantry perspective of whether or not they're a good team or not? So I think they've been disappointed from that perspective that they should be a lot better than what the record is right now. I mean, you say that, but look who they lost to. Brotherhood, like I just said, a great defense by yeah. one. Right. Lost to Lightweight. Uh, no, sorry, they beat Lightweight. Uh, lost to Sharks. Yeah, bad. I I don't thirty two twelve. That I, maybe I, I'm thinking Zach Stacy wasn't there for that game. Uh, kiss my in laws, and uh, beer belly week <clears> one <throat> kind of coming back, shaking off the rust. But then look who they're beating: Bruins, uh, lightweight. Uh, I mean, blue chips sure, but they destroyed blue chips twenty points. That's that's a serious you know three three plus possession uh, victory. So like yeah, I'm disappointed, but they're losing by like one 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 point one possession to right. very good teams, right. and then you know beating you know the the team that might we just discussed might end up as the might end up as being the number one seed in all of Div three in Bruins and beating lightweight a heavyweight contender. So I'm not too disappointed with them. The other one, if it's not going to be my team, I'd, I'd have to go with Dirty Birds. Uh, just uh, quickly. Uh, Quaid's been off. He had a good game this past Monday, I believe, on your field, Mo, in, uh, in Adebear. Finally, the offense seemed, well, uh, at least offensively in terms of the number of points scored, 42. But even then, I looked at the box score, and no receiver had more than, like, 40 yards and they 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 benefited maybe from short fields based off the interceptions that they were able to get from their defensive side of the ball, including a pick six from Quaid himself. Yeah. But I'd have to say just the the Dirty Birds overall offense that's what's been uh, disappointing to me in Div Three for sure. Yeah, I, I mean the game just quickly before we go on to the next division here with the women's, but um, they they benefited from the fact that. Um, uh, they played a team, which is blank out of my head right now, that they were Griff, Griff Nation. Griff Nation, uh, Stabo Ryan, didn't have a good game, and they punished them on those mistakes. And they could have punished them even even worse had, you know, some right. play national had a sack that was an INT for uh, Jalen Grandison, stuff like that. You know, that, that could have been even worse for them. So I just think that, yeah, they haven't played well. And I just think now for them, if they can kind of get in gear here, if they do qualify for the playoffs – then that's going to be fascinating to see. Maybe they might be the tough out that gets in, and then we'll go from there at that perspective. All right, on to women's here, Iggs. So, <clears throat> Brutes, they've had an awful season. Um, so, what do you think now? If they went out against Blue Poon and Bees, and if Bees are going to lose both games, and a lot of moving parts are for Brutes, but do they have a chance to qualify for playoffs, yes or no? Well, that's the thing. Like, we've been talking since, like, February that, you know, it's over. Brutes are out. And then I'm looking. And I'm like, hold on. The Brutes are not eliminated in this. I'm, I, I, yes, it was a lot of moving parts. They're 0-8. And, and they're not eliminated. They need to win out, obviously. That's the first thing. Which they need to beat the Bees. Okay, that's one of the teams that they're chasing. Uh and that happens to be a game tonight. They need to beat Bleu Pou. Yeah. But not only do they need to beat the Bees tonight, they need to demolish them. They need to beat them by like 30 plus points. Because right now, if they were to beat them and Vortex beats Bees, they would both be, brut, I mean, and Bees, would both finish the season at 2-8. and eight. Both would have beaten each other if Brut, again, beat Bees tonight 
at Laval. This is Tuesday night uh, at Laval. But they need then the next tiebreaker is points against. So and and bees have allowed about 34 points less. So they need to they need to run up the score. So I don't know if you're going to tell them tonight, hey girls, by the way, you need to go out and score 50, 60 points on them and not feel bad about it because you need to score as many points on this team and give up as little as possible as well to bees because if this final score is 60 to 59, you haven't helped yourself here because you you again points against is one of the tiebreakers after a head to head. So they they need to have a huge game tonight and it's just crazy to think that you know after a pretty bad season let, let's be honest, let's be brutally honest, they still have a chance and 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 the I we know Mo this offense it can it can score in bunches. We've seen it before. Yes, women's one is is you know a tough very tough division the best of women's flag football in Quebec, all combining here in women's uh, Division One and FPF. But they still have a chance, and that's incredible. And they should be really excited for tonight's opportunity. Uh, their playoff run, believe it or not, can, uh, can uh, you know, continue tonight. Well, they're not on my field, unfortunately, on field two tonight. No, they're not. So, so but... if, I see, if I see one of the Brutes uh, girls, I'll let them know and say run up the score and go for two-point <laughs> converts and stuff. Exactly. Uh, but, you know... From a uh, score cap, I think for sure one of maybe two games uh, this season. Yeah, uh, they just don't have the uh, the same dynamism. They don't have the same kind of edge offense that they had uh, in the in the fall cup that they won. Uh, like it's a step up weight class, right? In terms of the talent level that they're going up, and you think about that team in fall cup to where they are now, they did lose some firepower for sure. Yeah, but now but also this, beyond, but, right? Yeah, of course, that's a massive loss for them. But going to the final two games of the season, though, you're right. They have a chance. But it all starts tonight and how they uh, how they go about their agenda. And if they are going to be, look, let's just air it out and just hope for the best, then go for it. Because you can't – you cannot – you have to abandon the element of caution now. They have to go for this and make a run for points here. Look, at 0-8, you win. And there could be funky scenarios of, of tiebreakers to look at that can play into your benefit. Yep. So, yeah, for sure that's going to be key for them. Do I think they can do it? Sure, I think it will happen. I'm not too sure in that sense because, again, this is a team that's own eight that has had some weird losses, and I'm not too sure if they can make up the lost ground because, again, to be where they're at now in a deep, deep hole, very tough to climb out of that, and I'm not sure if that's going to happen for them. Um, defensive play of the year, you mentioned Nike right now, Je- Jessica Bostappen along with Jasmine Farmer. Who you got? I have my pick in my mind. Oh, okay, then go ahead. Start. Uh, I'll start with you, Mo. JB. JB is a cheap destroyer. She's an unbelievable player. Uh, one of my favorites out there in terms of how she plays. Uh, 11 sacks already this year. Uh, five PDs. I mean, she's wrecked 16 plays, if not more, with her rushing ability to throw incompletions, which are never accounted for in terms of what a pass rusher can do for a quarterback pressure. I think she's unbelievably talented, and we see it on the men's side and how well she's been a thorn for many quarterbacks on the adult side of this division here. So give me JB to win this award. I think she's unbelievably talented and one of my fair players uh, for male or female in FPF. So I love the pick and I love these sneaky five PDs, right? I mean, because sack for interception, it's very close between her and Jasmine Farmer. Right now, I'd say the two leading candidates for two uh, defensive player of the year. But I think a PD... F- coming from a rusher is somehow more valuable than coming from a DB. A DB, depending on the play and depending on the down, uh, is almost like a lost interception and can sometimes be almost a deflating pay, a play sometimes. Again, if it's fourth down, uh, and again, this is a women's division, so actually you'd rather the interception on fourth down end up with better field position unless... No, like there's rarely a time that you don't want the interception on fourth down in the women's division, but it's still there's there's just something more, you know, satisfying about a PD coming from your rusher because as much, you know, as long even though she didn't get the sack in this case, she was able to get a hand on the ball and basically like you said wreck a play. Um I man, it's it's going to be close. I I'm going to go with Jessica as well. Uh, especially having seen her last night 
Uh, and again, it was a COVID one, so it doesn't enter the discussion here. But uh, COVID one game, uh, su- a zero sub playing uh, Le Petit Fuck, of course, Dom Lafon running around in the backfield. Uh, they were, she was able to help her team come out with a one point victory, and we'll talk about that in COVID one. Uh, but just to, just to show how her 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 presence is not just limited to the women's, but the COVID and the men's uh, divisions, like you uh, like you said. So yeah, give me uh, Jessica Bustamp in as well. Okay, so you you asked me this question about you know the favorites for women's too and what's happening right now. Uh, who could be that team? And you look at Kiss My Boots. They've come up with some massive wins and they beat Hebrew two by a score of twenty six to six. Now they're in first place, seven and two. I'll be they don't they, they don't control their destiny to be the number one seed because Hebrew has one game in hand against them. So my fe- my theory now as we move in towards the final weeks of the season that we have left. Um, I think we're starting to see shape of how the top four can be. I think uh, Red Nation has four games to go, so they might be involved. Um, I think they're no lower than five Red Nation. They can go as high as maybe eight wins, which could get them a top seed if things really play out their way. But Kiss My Boots has really done well. They've really um, caught my attention on how well they played the last few weeks. But I think the Hebrew uh, teams are the teams to watch out for. I know the Hebrew lost uh, earlier this year to Red Nation. But they have quite the depth to work with. I think Cavaliers, it's great that they're 7 1, but I want to see them win the playoffs, right? That's where it matters most in my books, as we all know, is playoff football. So I think right now, no question, Kiss My Boots are the favorites for today, but that can all change because of how close the top six, top seven has been so far this season. Well, that's why I asked the question, because I heard you speaking with Laurie Willette on eating waffles or planning on eating waffles on my way to Toronto. Uh, back to Montreal, actually. Yeah, I was thanks, listening I'm to that, day, by the way. Thank to you. that one. Waffles and, and creamy uh, uh, whipped cream and fresh fruit smell. I'm just going to keep saying all your favorite things. No problem. Bananas, bananas, bananas. No you problem, love your... Man. You love your I bananas. I can put you on mute, and I want to hear a single word in my headset from you. So <laughs> Actually, no. Omar only is the only one who can put me on mute. Uh, so thank you, Omar, for keeping me uh, my voice alive here. Uh, no, Mo, because I was listening. I was listening to you, and you had doubts. You, you're like, it's a little foggy to me. I don't really know who the clear-cut favorite is. And you mentioned right now you still like the Ibu Ibu two teams. Kiss my boots, beat them both rather convincingly. I mean, 26 to 6. It was 26 0 at this point. They got a freebie at the end, just last garbage time touchdown. And earlier this year, I think, believe it was the end of January, kiss my boots, I was scorekeeping the game. And Ibu were not in this, in this, like, they didn't even look. And I've seen them play. They are a good team. Don't get me wrong. But. This was a non-competitive 19 to 0 shutout game. Just the way they've been playing these Ibu franchise teams, man, kiss my boots to me. I don't think you can argue. They are the clear-cut number 1 favorite in this division. Yes, they've had a hiccup against Red Nation and I believe it was Carabibs. against Patria no, uh Carababes week 1. Yes. Carababes week 1. Are you kidding me? I I will find the audio and I will tell you that after week one, when I saw that game against Carababes, I said, do not worry about this Kiss My Boots team. This is going to be one of the better teams in women's one. And here they are right now sitting at seven and two atop the leaderboard. Kiss My Boots, best team in women's two right now. For now in the clubhouse, yes, they're the number one team, but it could all change. It could all change for them because at seven and two, they don't 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 control their fate for first place, right? Hibu has a game in hand. I don't care. I don't care about first place. They yeah, are the best I team do. in women's I do, I do, because they don't want to have a, a tougher matchup around two and beyond. Like, you want the easiest road. This Fine. This division is, is going to be full of uh, plot twists um, going towards playoffs. I, I think there will be a bunch of upsets that we're going to have. I really do. I think there's yeah. going to be one or two teams in the top five or top six that get bounced in the first round. That's my prediction. Book it. I'll, uh, I'll book it in my book. Book it in your book. Put a bookmark with that book and book it that I have booked that two teams will lose. Like digital numbers. bookmark. I exactly. Will. But that's the thing. I, I think that this division, as I was seeing a clearer picture of teams that could be favorites, there's also the instability of teams that of great superiority could lose out in the one and done in the playoffs. Yep. yep. So that's why it's the parity of this division that could really play a big factor. Um, 
so right now, Wildcats, uh, they are in a funk of late. I uh, have not won since February 12th. And you look at Caravaves, they had a 0 for 2 weekend and have lost three straight. So right now, um, losing confidence in who is Wildcats or Caravaves? Uh, yeah, I was looking at that and like, who's losing more stock here right now? Because sure, you, okay, Caravaves, losers of three straight, Wildcats, losers of two straight. Okay, it's Caravaves. But the thing is, Wildcats, their last win was February 12th. Yeah. Like uh, a month and a half ago, they, they haven't won in a month and a half. So I'm like, okay, this it might be Wildcats. Like, Carababes have, you know, just played more games as of late. I, I, I'm I going to still go with Carababes, uh, especially after the 0-2 weekend. Uh, I believe they lost by a combined 20 points for, 57 points against. And that's just not the way you want to be going into your playoff uh, run. They have the last game against Patriot CSL, which, again, you guys talked about it last week. A very tough team uh, to play up against. And, man, if, if going 0-4 into the playoffs after a great start to the season, right? They uh, started 3-1 and the year, looking like one of the best teams in uh, in the division. Man, to go 0-4 into the, into the playoffs, I'm, I, I got to say, Carababes losing uh, stock is dropping real quick. Uh, I, I'm okay with Carababes. I think they'll rebound. They're four and five right now. They they know how to win these type of games. I think Wildcats are the team that I'm really like, oof, you know, kind of queasy right now. Give me some Pepto Bismol to kind of uh, ail my tummy with them. So I think they're the team to watch out for that could really have a funk and end up in a bad playoff matchup uh, come week one of the playoffs here. So give me Wildcats to do it. Uh, now we'll bring in our next guest, talk some Diff Six and some 35 plus. Uh, a man of I guess. Low regal qualities. It is Brent Bakken. Low regal? Regal qualities. So Brent Bakken now on with us. Low regal Your qualities. Honor. Your honor Brent Bakken. I'm, here. I'm sure, Brent. I'm sure. If I'm low regal, my friend. I don't know how to describe you. But continue on. I could, look, I could go on, but we don't have time to, to trash you for the next hour and a half because I have places to go, people to meet. I have a hot date tonight, okay? so You both are in the mouth right tonight, score three. Settle Feel down. Three. You, you can, it, it, you can, three. You can Feel three. You can do your debating on the field, Feel okay? Three. You know, I, I, I intentionally put Brett on field I, one to avoid him getting <laughs> trashed by Mo Khan here tonight, so okay. that's why. Please, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let, let's dive yeah, into Brent. Um, yes, sir. We, you, you called it last week about school no. kind of being fidgety. Uh, was that a warning sign with them losing on the weekend, going to one on one in their games that, hey, they're not as immortal as we all thought they were at that point? I mean, I said earlier in the season, right, in, in uh, I believe at the halfway point of one of my articles, that I didn't think school was going to go undefeated. Man, I was proven right. I was wrong, though, with who I thought was going to beat school. I, I thought it was going to be. Um, what are you doing, Step Bros? I, I, I picked them to, to have the upset, and instead of show me your TDs, obviously I was a little wrong on that. Show me your TDs with the 19-6 victory over Skull. Uh, so they still lost, but again, I was wrong on the team. But I don't think it really uh, is cause for alarm. I mean, listen, okay, so they finished the regular season. Well, ideally, they'll finish the regular season 9-1. and one. It's not the end of the world. They're still hands down the best team in Div 6. So, I mean... If anything, it may give the rest of the six confidence. Hey, you know what? We can beat these guys. They finally suffer the L. But I don't think it should shake up Skull too, too much, to be honest. Hmm, interesting. So some of the teams that could uh, potentially give a Skull, give Skull a, a run for their money uh, would be teams with good quarterbacks. Two of those teams that come to mind and two of the quarterbacks that come to mind, Manny Bazogius uh, and any of the quarterbacks from the Pigeons team. Uh, could any of those two teams and quarterbacks give Skoll a run for their money? And who's the better quarterback between them? I mean, I'm going to have to say Manny Bezogius. I mean, hands down. I mean, the man has 36 touchdown passes. He has eight INTs. I mean, that's not that high even, to be honest with you. Uh, you look at the Pigeons, right? Anthony Del Pescio, four TD, uh, 14 TDs, four INTs. There's Mass and Alejandro, Alessandro, pardon me, 
should be called. So they both combined for 15 touchdown passes and four interceptions. You add all that up, right? I mean, that's what, 29, if I'm not mistaken, touchdowns, right? So that still pales in comparison to the 36 that Manny has. M- Manny is definitely the, the better quarterback out of all uh, all four quarterbacks, really. Uh, f- um, if you right. combine them all, obviously three for the pitches and Manny by himself. So can meet fiddlers give Skoll a run for their money then? It's a good question. Um, I think so. I mean, if you look at the meat fiddlers, right? I mean, listen, they're, they're a talented team. It is what it is, right? I mean, you 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 have Manny Bazogius, right? Again, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I mean, they're eight, and, right? They're they're pretty much with the same record as school. You look at the big win, right? I mean, they knocked off the pigeons. They they smoked uh, mutation. They could he lost to the Super Turbo Naves. That that's that's it's not a bad loss. The Super Turbo Naves are actually a decent decent team. I think with with the midfielders, they, they've beaten pretty much all the teams that they should have beaten. And it's not only that they've beaten them, they've blown them out, right? They're not just yes. getting by, by, you know, by a hair. Uh, the only thing you look at their schedule, besides the Pigeons, I personally feel that the midfielders haven't really played anybody. It's a little They beat weak. up on the Nardogs. Sorry? It's a little weak, yeah. Not the most uh, yeah, it's a, enduring Well, schedule. yeah, it's not, not the most daunting schedule, right? I mean, it's pretty much the Pigeons and the Super Togo and Aves. And as I said, Super Turbo Navas actually beat them 30 to 18 in week six. But to answer your question, Nikki, I, I still think the meat fiddlers, because of the quarterback play they have, I think they have a chance to at least give Skull a run for the money. I'm not saying they would knock them off in the playoffs, but at least to give them a run for sure. Uh, Brent, right now, before we get to the next question here, um, as of today, would you take uh, meat fiddlers and or Skull or the field to make the finals? Skull. Okay, fair enough then. Uh, a team that that caught my attention in a very tough division is Demons. Are they now in that conversation to be a title contender? I mean, they're coming off of a bad loss on Saturday, right? Twenty-seven eighteen to the Free Asian Squad, good bounce back win by bounce back uh, play there by the Free Asian Squad. Uh, for, so for the Demons, that put an end to their four-game winning streak. I was looking at it a little further though. So look at the teams they beat. During that winning streak, right? Queens, uh, Cavaliers, the Rohan, Towers F team, DG Shots. I mean, it's not exactly murderous row of teams, but at the other other side of the coin, right? Four wins in a row, so four wins in a row. I like Demons. I Max Gannett. I've talked about him a couple of times here on the air with you guys, and obviously in my articles. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback who seems to be getting better after each start, and he has a good supporting cast around him. I think Demons, they're deep. I want to say they're a championship contending team just because because of the quarterback play really sets them apart from some of the other teams they may have to face down the road. Like Matt Gannett with his arm and with his legs, he, he's he's an elite quarterback in this division. So I say, yeah, Demons are a team that could definitely make a run to the championship. One of the teams you mentioned, Brent, uh, in meet Fiddler's schedule, uh, that they blew out Mutation. Uh, yes. Have Mutation, since that blowout loss, have they finally sorted out you know, sort of their messy room and their, uh, you know, bit of their roster inconsistencies. And maybe are they a dark horse uh, going into the playoffs? I mean, they could be. Uh, they won two out of their last three games, and that they have actually a big win over the free agent squad as well, right? So that's a huge win for them. I, I was in Laval last Wednesday. I wasn't uh, scorekeeping that field, but I saw I was on um, field two, so I saw on field one they were playing the uh, Jurassic Park Rangers. They blew them out. I believe it was 38 nothing. So I mean that's that's promising. Um I think mutation, I mean they're five and four right now. They're they're playing their best football over the second half of the season for sure. So I mean that's without a doubt. It's gonna be big though because they finish uh next Saturday against the Super Turbo Navets, right? And the Super Turbo Navets have won four out of the last five. Mutation can knock them off to really, really be going into the playoffs then with a lot of momentum. And again, they're coming off of a 2019 loss of the Pigeons. That's, that's nothing to to sneeze at, right? It's a tough game. It's literally one play away from 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 going from a loss to a W. But so I think for mutation, you had to answer your question. I I think they're a team that's kind of right in the ship. And you talked you talked about obviously getting some of that roster uh, that was a little in flux, if you will, trying trying to get it back in order, so on and so forth. And again, they're playing their best ball at the right time. So I think that's a team to watch out for for sure. Uh, Brent, uh, the Royals right now, they have three more games left on their schedule. Uh, they're four and three. Any confidence in them to get into the higher playoff uh, bracket than playing in six deep for the playoffs? 
I, I mean, will say before you answer, they they have made uh, the Royals have made a quarterback switch. Uh, they had Eric Pelusiak throwing for most of the season. He's like, man, this is a goddamn stressful position, and has given the reins over to uh, Massimo Rizzotti. So has that does that you know factor in uh, to maybe your uh, your analysis here, Brent? I mean, it should be less turnovers than for the offense. I mean, no disrespect, but it is what it is, right? The team is turning over the ball a lot earlier in the season, especially before they made the change, right? I just look at the remaining schedule. It's tough. I mean, they have the Pigeons, Fire and Blood, and the Demons, right? They finish off the season. It's tough. As much as the improvement that we've seen, at least on offense, or that we should be seeing on offense now with the quarterback change, I have no confidence that they're going to be any of those teams. I think it'll be close to those games, but I still don't think they're going to be able to knock either three of those teams off. And, and to be able to make that jump like you guys are talking about to the higher uh, playoff uh, bracket. So you think there'd be six D bound, essentially? Yeah, yeah, pretty hundred percent. Yeah, to be honest, I, I like to be proven wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I definitely hope I'm wrong. I'm just saying, right now, I don't know. It's not looking good. Well, you know, I mean, you've been proven wrong with the Niners, Net Seminoles, Bruins. Yeah, yeah playoff team. Bruins. Sorry, continue on. Choking the playoffs as usual. All right, uh, on yeah, to thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five yeah, plus, playoffs, Iggy. Yeah. Kick it off with thirty-five plus, my friend. Yeah, sure. so again, we're calling the audible. Uh, Brent Barkin, Mo Khan, Iggy Magnets here coming with your week 12 uh, calling the audible segment. We're uh, again joined by Brent Barkin. We're going to be talking 35 plus uh, right now. Brent, I was there last night with you on Monday night, Saint Laurent, the uh, where the uh, KTFL come to play. Uh, last night was the night of upsets in the KTFL division. Which one was more surprising to you? Uh, the other side of the field on Rock beating Brody Windsor, the number one seed, or was it your field with Flag Plus beating JMJ? I say it's on Rock beating Brody Windsor, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Two things. A, Sean Abram had a horrible game. He came up to me and said that himself afterwards. I was yeah. busting his chops the whole time, like just a couple pick sixes, just some bad passes. Late on throws, missing guys. At one point, he threw an INT, went off the receiver's hands. It took a funny deflection. I think mean, we were talking about that, Iggy, and the guy <laughs> ended up running it back for a touchdown. And Sean just like dropped, dropped on his back, dropped it to his guy into the floor. And just like the look on his face. I've seen that sometimes. It's hilarious. But uh, yeah, so I think that obviously you're expecting to play Chris Olsen. I like Chris. He's a buddy of mine. But they ended up playing against Jeff Rosenblatt. That's a huge difference at quarterback, right? Jeff Rosenblatt, you know, D1 guy. Hall of Famer, you know what I mean? Like, it, that's a huge difference. And it, it seemed like whenever On Rock was giving uh, Brody Windsor a chance to come back in the game, Brody Windsor would make a mistake, and then On Rock would just capitalize on it, and that would be pretty much it. Uh, the other game we were talking about, obviously, yeah, with Flag Plus, uh, with JMJ. I mean, those are two even teams. I, I'm supr- Okay, I'll be honest. I'm surprised that that uh jmj lost i think jmj is a really good team this ryan caster in that game looked like he also he was he was laid on one or two throw and it came back to, to to bite his offense uh they had a couple of missed tackles so obviously you have vince Arndone on the field right for five plus vince Arndone is the best player i think in all of uh 35 plus he's gonna make plays it is what it is one thing i'll say though J- jason rossi right he was he was clutch when his team needed him to be Yep. He's able to, able to avoid turnovers. I, I've, I've been doing almost all their games for like the last six, seven weeks. And I love Ross. He's a great dude playing against him in, in Div C, Div 3, forever. He'll make a lot of great throws. He'll have a lot of huge runs. But then he'll make that crucial mistake at sometimes the wrong time. And he'll come back to bite his team. And last night, he wasn't perfect. Only going 14 to 26 for 162 yards and three TDs. But he didn't make that back-breaking mistake in crunch time, which I think really helped his team. Uh, Brent, we mentioned quickly JMJ. Um, any concerns about them going into the playoffs on the slide? Uh, you know, but then again, they've lost three games by a total of seven points this season. Uh, so, what, what do we look at now for JMJ and their hopes going towards the final three games of their season? I mean, yeah, they're on a three game slide, like you said, but yeah, not, not a huge point differential. I think what they got to do, so last night, okay, it is what it is, right? Sometimes there's going to be some missed calls. I think some of their players though really got wrapped up and like the calls that were missed or really would start running their routes or, or finishing getting to the top of the routes. And as soon as any little contact was made, they were looking for a flag instead of fully concentrating on catching the ball. I think that bit them. Uh, uh, the defense, obviously, with some of the bad tackling going on. It was a little surprising because this is obviously it's a veteran crew, right? I know they had Andrew Carruthers 
filling in last night. Uh, this guy's like a legend in FPF. Uh, he had a pretty decent game. But again, like, like guys looking for calls, some drop passes, because there's a couple of goals as well. Again, obviously, like I said, Castle being laid in some throws and just the, the, the lack of downfield coverage by the defense, at least last night, came back to bite them, right? I go back to Nardone. Nine catches for 118 yards and two CDs. Listen, Vince Nardone's a beast. He's an animal. And I said, I think he's the best player in 35 plus, but 118 yards is still 118 yards, right? So I think for, for JMJ to really write this ship, when you're playing at their best, they're not making mistakes. They're not looking for calls. They're executing, right? This is the veteran team, obviously. Everyone's a veteran team. But this is a team with a lot of championship experience on, on, on their roster, right? And they're able to make plays when it really matters in crunch time. And I think if they're able to get back to that, focus on the fundamentals, catching the ball, tackling people, do, doing the basics, right? Football one or flight football one on one, right? I think that'll help them out a lot. Brent, I'm not sure how, how much of the uh, Legends division in 35 plus uh, you've caught. I believe the Mondays at Saint Laurent is uh, is just the KTFL. Uh, so uh, just correct me on that. Uh, KTFL only on the Monday nights. Yeah, so pretty much from what I've seen, it's uh, I was talking to Dave Allen about that actually. So I'm looking at the website right now. So if I go to the 35 plus legends, uh, yeah, yeah. So I there you have you have yet. bears, you have the the teams of bearskins, gray hawks, yeah, uh, everything yeah. hurts. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so you're right. senior. Yeah. So yeah. I haven't so seen any it, of those teams. So. Talk to me a little bit then <laughs> yeah, about I the uh, analysis over here. I, well, I know, I, I know. Okay, well, I know the Bears games, right? I, I played against these, I, these guys from my first championship in FPF, right? A lot of the guys, my team, obviously JM, Brian Edinson, and those those guys, Bertoldi. Like I know a lot of these guys from having played against them, right? Jadaridi and cast like that, right? Um, what 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 is that? What, what do you want me to answer about the, <laughs> the, the legends? Division? So so everything hurts. Started the season at one and five, the last place team right now, sitting on the outside of the playoffs uh, right now. Started the season one and five. They've made a switch at quarterback uh, with Josh Curry throwing the ball in their last two games, now going two and zero. Oh. Do you think uh, that they have a chance now at making the playoffs right now, sitting again at the number five seed with this quarterback switch? I mean, uh, put him on the spot here, man. <laughs> you can see the look right, of because, like, yeah, I, because I mean, you can look at the look of it, I mean, it, it, the look of fear in Brent's eyes. I've never seen that before, except for when I oh, smoke yeah, him. Oh yeah, I'm shook. I'm when shook. I smoke him in, in shook. sports, it, it, but that's it, it, the point, though. Uh huh. Uh huh. Anyways, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, right? 80, 81 percent completion uh, percentage right, for Josh Curry, right? Versus, I mean, I know Vince, obviously Vince Pisano, 61 completion percentage, and then obviously. Uh, Frank. Frank, yeah, Frank, right? Uh, Teoli Colatrella, yeah, Colatrella. There you go. Like forty-five percent uh, forty-five percent completion percentage, right? I mean, six TDs, thirty-nine INTs. Obviously, you do the quick math, right? Yeah, Josh Curry seems to be an upgrade uh, in that position. But yeah, to answer the question, I mean, can they can they sneak into that last playoff spot? I mean, I mean, consider uh, this too. Consider this. The teams they're chasing, Greyhawks at number three and Team Ethnic Senior at number four, are the two teams that Josh Gurry has just beat. So not only do they potentially have tiebreakers if these teams were to be, you know, tied with the same number of points, a little hard because there's a, there's a tie between the Greyhawks and Team Ethnic Senior. But if ever that was the case, they do have the tiebreaker over them. And, uh, and right now, again, those are the two teams they, they just beat. So do you give them a chance? And, well, I do because, I mean, they, they finished off the season, right? Uh, everything hurts against the Bearskins. Uh, the, uh, right. Yeah, uh, on the 9th. And then one day later on the 10th, they played the Greyhawks, right, to wrap up the regular season. So I definitely give them a chance, right? I mean, they've already proven they could beat the Greyhawks, right? They, they, they beat them, yeah, by a score of 25 to 18. So, I mean, yeah. you'd like to think they could do it again. I mean, not, the Greyhawks are obviously going to come ready to – the fight for that playoffs, but yeah, I, I think with Curry at quarterback, if, if it stays that way 100%, yeah, I do like the chances. I mean, looking at it right now, I mean, yeah, some of the names I recognize obviously, Anthony CJ, a great guy, and, and, and is definitely a playmaker on both sides of the ball. So, yeah, you know what? I, I want to give the edge to everything hurts. 
I, I think they're going to be able to, to make that the, to catch a, the last playoff spot there. One of the two last playoff spots. All right, Brent, before I let you go, uh, when's your next Diff 6 article coming out for us? That will be on Sunday. I'm going to do so. I announced in my article last week. I'm going to be doing my annual um, pretenders, contenders, and we're not sure yet article. So it's talking about every single team in, uh, in Div 6. So it's all 30 teams. It's, it's a lot of work. I'm actually going to start it tomorrow. So do a couple per day. So I should have it out by Sunday afternoon. Uh, I know I'm scorekeeping on Saturday. So that's also why I'm saying I'm going to have it on Sunday instead of Saturday. So yeah, look for it uh, Sunday, early afternoon. It should be out there for everyone to read and hopefully enjoy. Thanks so much, Brand. You're always our pretender with the three of us here on the show. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Brand. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, get you know him what? off, Omar. You, you, get him off the air. 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 Next time, let me know if you can ask 35 plus questions. Let me know ahead of time. <laughs> I'm sitting there the like, fear oh, of God was seen in the yeah. eyes of Brent Bach and I could see the fear of God in my friend. I'm mad, John, my friend. I'm able to adapt All on the fly, right. my friend. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Tuesday night score. Get it out of here. Thanks a lot, right. right. see other, You'll see each other later, yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Brent. All right. Thank, thank later. you, Brent. You too. Good night. All right. That pretended Brent Bach. And let's go on. Let's continue on here, Eggs. We got to uh, we got to plow through here, man. We got a lot to no, cover in very little time uh, moving forward here. It's going to Div 1, Div 2. Um, so right now, Div 1. Uh, there's going to be a, a playing game with seven, eight, nine, ten. We know there's game. We know who the ten teams are going to be for the playoffs here. But have Bless done enough to avoid fall into that playing window of games that will happen for the first round for Div One? Uh, that's seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, yes. Sitting in the fifth position, uh, Bless just got a big victory. Uh, or am I thinking of Blessed Up? The, the the two damn names. Uh, no, they got a big win over uh, Maroons, as we see it on screen right now. That's 36, correct. Uh, to 32. Yeah, massive, massive win for them. Um, did they do enough to avoid 7, 8, 9, 10? Uh, I mean, one game remaining uh, could potentially get 12. Rayom still can get 11. KGP still has a lot of runway. Uh, man, they, they, no, they didn't do enough. They need a tie or a win in their final game, uh, of the regular season, uh, to really secure themselves a, uh, a, a, um, a buy in the first round and they're playing KGP next really. So that, that again, like I said, a tie or win cements themselves that, until then, I, I, I just can't. There's too much runway for the other teams, especially if KGP is one of the teams that beats them along the way. Um, there's just, there's, nah, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see them being a lock with nine games played right now. Well, if they end up being five and five, and they end up being as a seven, eight, that's, that's, that means the, it's a testament to the division having uh, at least seven teams that would be 500 yeah. or better, right? Because they'd yeah. be five and five. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say yes. They've done enough. I think they've they've done enough because uh, Lumiere has to make up a game and a half essentially on on Bless, right? So that means mm -hmm. you got two games left, and you got to make up a game and a half at least to get themselves into the fifth spot. KHP has yep. again. They do have a little bit more uh, wiggle room to work with, and could make up the lost uh, games in terms of the games in hand against Bless. But I'm going to give them that. I, I think they will avoid it, but they'll probably be the sixth seed going towards the playoffs and don't have to go through uh, a game, of, a, a stomach the playing game uh, for that matter. So I think they'll be okay. But again, they've definitely been up and down this season, but that was a massive win over the Maroons who are now Huge. in that playoff window, um, playing game window, that is, uh, for the number eight spot in that Division One format. So FFN, they're not going to playoffs. They're done. They're 0-9. What went wrong with this team this year and why they are 0-9 and are not going to the playoffs? I mean, they just signed up for the wrong division. I mean, I I guess I get why they didn't do Division 2 because they have a Division 2 team for the most part with uh, Jared Taylor, Rocco, Juwan, in Poseidon's Kiss. Uh, they're kind of struggling this year in Division 2 as well, although they got a massive, massive win uh, in uh in week 12 of uh, the FPF season. I mean, not enough higher division experience. I mean, I didn't, I, I saw this coming from a mile away. 
I mean, it's Div 1. It's the best of the best. And they are good. Don't get me wrong. These individual players are great players. But as a team, they haven't played together long enough to, or like these other Division 1 teams. You need years of experience and years and seasons and seasons under your belt playing together to just be competitive if not like not lose by 30 plus points to in, in division one and like that's that's why it's so hard to make that jump into division one i mean i i guess i'll give them kudos for giving it a shot but that's why it's so hard to make the jump into division one not only do you need the guys you need to have played so many seasons together and and be on that same page you can't be learning you, each other's tendencies and, and where you're going to be and how you're going to react in Division One. You can't do that. You're going to go 0 and 10. And, and that's what you see here. Well, they, they missed out on having a down with Zara be quarterback. Uh, I'm talking that about too. that type of player. Um, yeah. To put Jared Taylor at quarterback, you've weakened your receiving core. And yep. Jared, you know, he played quarterback early on in his FPF career for Division Six back in the day. But yeah. he is known Div for. Six. Yeah, he's known for his. His talents as a pass catcher, not as a pass thrower. And um, that hurt them, that weakened them. And that put them at a, at a severe disadvantage that you're, you're, you're not playing in a, in a proper context of Division One, where you need to have a quarterback. If you don't have one, you're dead. And, and they got smoked uh, yeah. to be 0-9 now with one more game to go. And it's a what if, right? If they had been FFN and 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 uh, sorry, if they'd been athletic squad, big part. Yeah, yeah. If they'd be that, then maybe they would have gone in. But I think that has been their downfall. You're right with the Div Two team with Poseidon's kids being there that avoided that put them in a position that they had to play Div One, and it's too bad because they're they're a really good athletic team, great football yeah. minds on that roster, yes. and they came up short when it mattered most. And now they have to kind of wonder what if we had a quarterback like Dallas Zara, who we hope is going to come back for spring season after his injury in the Fall Cup. And if they do get a guy like him, who knows what could happen. The the, uh, the sky's level for them at that point. Um, Jamesons. Uh, you think about it right now, even with their loss to the Jamesons, Flagmore sacked. Do they have a chance at the number one seed, uh, given that they're both 7-1 with two games to go? I mean, they do, just because it's Flagmore sack, but they can't outscore their problem here uh, because again points against is the tiebreaker uh, and Jamison's already beat Flagmal Sack 29-24 in uh, week two first game of the season for the Jamison so um, f- the thing is not only can they not outscore their their deficit right now in terms of the tiebreaker between uh, them and the Jamisons uh, they're down or they've let up what is it right now? Thirty is that third? No, twenty-three more points than the Jamisons with the same number of games played already. So they'd have to uh, they'd have to win by giving up a game like a Division One game by only giving up six or thirteen points, which is incredibly tough to do because most of these teams are going to put up thirty points minimum on on any Division One defense, and they're playing party crashers and all stars. Sure, I heard, you know, your discussion with Jeff Rosenblatt last week. Ken Wyeth, you know, might be sitting that one out. I don't, I mean, unless it's a non-starter QB, I mean, I think they're, they'll be okay even with, like, a Div 2 quarterback coming in to play with them, right? You still have amazing receivers to throw to. I, You're at least giving up 20, 26, 28 points. So, they're, they're as, as good as the defense is, and Manuel Arroyo has alluded to the fact that, my God, don't discount, and even Jeff Rosenblatt, don't discount this team's defense. It's just Div One, man. Like you're gonna you're gonna let up 30 points, and it's okay. But they what they need is a, a game where they only let up six or or 12, and that's just not gonna happen. Yeah, they don't care for defense. You know, flag status, like score the touchdown, we'll come back score eight points on you. That's what that's what they, yeah, they don't exactly. care about playing defense. Give us the football. They right? have to. They have to for the if they care about the number one seed. Yeah, if they do care, which I don't think they really know. I don't think the, they know where they are in the standings. To be honest, they, they just come and up, they just come and play. play. Oh, we got Braves. Okay, cool. Let's go we'll beat them. Right, and they beat the Braves earlier this season at, at the Bears. So. Yeah. I don't think they'll catch um, Jameson's for one. I think Jameson's will have that to themselves. And I think Jameson's need the one seed more than Flying Sack does. And I think now at this point in the season for where 
Alexander Pugh's is with this offense. They're humming. They're fine. They're not. There's not. Any, there's not many questions about that. I think you're right about the defense. Um, because because if they end up in in a Braves or or All Stars, um, who knows? A quarterfinal, semifinal, whatever it might be at that point. You know, it might be first one to sixty wins, and can they yep. come up with that stop? Which they have. They've come up with a stop or two against the Braves as they did in the in the regular season yep. portion. So yep. I, I think, yeah, this this might not happen for them to be the one seed, but I think James's will be your one, and they'll be your number two seed. Uh, dip two. Um, right now, I'll go with the first question for you. Go for if, it. If they don't win another game the rest of the way, so it's 2HD, uh, Dirty Birds Plus, Bless Up, and their wins are what they are right now. Are they safe to be in the playoffs going towards the final three weeks of the season? Who's this? Who are we talking about? 2HD, uh, Dirty Birds Plus, and Bless Up. Oh, if they don't win another, win another game, game the rest, the rest of, the of the season? Are they so, safe? They got three wins, three wins, two wins, two wins. So, you, in other words, you're asking us to look at the Skills Bees, Poseidon Kiss, and Run It Once schedule. So... Let's go ahead and do that. So we we know Skills Bees, my God, they must be the most unlucky team in, in FPF. Seriously, in all of FPF, like all 230 teams. Like this this team's putting up, like like you've talked about, 60, what was it, 63 points and lose. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and then, you know, they have they lost by 45, 44 in overtime to Terror Squad. So they have Bless Up. And the Stoics, I think those are two teams they could beat. I mean, you could have said that against like their entire schedule. They could have beat this team, could have beat that team, but but they didn't. Uh, will their you know bad luck kind of creep them and bite them in the butt one more time? Uh, look, I think they can split that. Uh, so skills bees splitting that would be two, seven, and one, putting them at five points. So Dirty Birds and 2HD are safe in that uh, equation. Poseidon's Kiss, again, huge win, 52-26 over Hashtag and R. Have Dirty Birds and Terror Squad next. Uh, though that's tough. I don't know. Uh, as bad as a season, record-wise, Poseidon's Kiss has had, they can explode like they did uh, with against Hashtag and R. If, and and the, the seasons that, by seasons, plural, I mean Dirty Birds plus and Dirty Birds, that Quaid has had, he's had a better last two weeks. But man, there was a three, four week stretch that Quaid couldn't score more than two touchdowns and was throwing four plus interceptions almost right. every game. And it was a bit alarming. He's he's coming out of that now, like we talked about in Division Three, where he's put up 20, uh, 40 plus points. His his teams have in in the last two weeks. But man, Poseidon's kiss with Corey Wolowski throwing for hashtag NR picked him off four or five times with like two pick sixes. So that, that that defense can pop off if Quaid has a bad game there. Man, that's a Poseidon's kiss defense that you don't want to have a bad game against because they're gonna make you pay. And with Rocco you know, feeling comfortable and in control of a game, that's how you can get a 52-26 scoreline like they did against NR. So that one's a bit of... I, I kind of like Poseidon's kiss in that one, but it, it would be tough and a close game. And then against Terror Squad, and Terror Squad's had a tough season, Poseidon's kiss could win that one too. But if Terror Squad plays their best game, then they're not winning it. So, man, that's a little bit how Division 2 has gone this, this season is, man, these teams are all good. Poseidon's Kiss, Dirty Bird Plus, Terror Squad, but they're, they're just not bringing their best on any given night. And when you don't do that, teams will make you pay. So they, they there's a bit of cannibalizing there. That I think the the one that really puts a wrench in your question about 2HD, Dirty Birds, and, and Run It Once is this Poseidon's Kiss remaining schedule. And then uh, just quickly here, uh, Run It Once, man, them two, they started off so strong. And there was that, I'm telling you, there. I said it when it happened. There was that game against Terror Squad. Run it once, was up 26-6. to six, And Terror Squad made it all the way back, 28-26, to win that game. It was a one-handed two-point convert from A.J. Gomez. 
and and ever since that game, run it once, lost to two HD, lost to ambush, lost to silent ticklers, lost to cap friendly Braves, and big loss over the Stoics this past weekend. What, what did I just rattle off? Five losses in a row since that game. I I just I knew it. I knew that that game. Matt, they they could have gone three and zero and and had a great start to the season, and instead that was the turning point in their season. They have Dirty Birds Plus and hashtag NR left. So I, not only does Poseidon Kiss play a large role in this, Dirty Birds Plus play a large role in their own fate. In your question, so uh, if I got anything out of this analysis, it's that Dirty Birds Plus and Poseidon's Kiss really hold a, a large key. In, in this uh, in this final seedings and this final positioning here. So it took you four minutes to ask this question. I was yes, looking at the clock. Did. Next. See, four Next. minutes to ask this question. Next. You could have said the last part and we would have been done with this Div, question. I had to analyze it and then come to a conclusion. I'm just saying. Science you could have, paper. You could have said the, the last, that last part that the bees and <laughs> kids had all the keys to this whole process. And that would have saved us four minutes of breaking down the schedules here. I'll Analysis. make this quick point here. I'll make this quick yep. point right now. I think Dirty Birds Plus, Terra Squad are going to be safe. I think Run It Once and Bless Up have some issues right now. I don't know what the issues are, 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 but they just don't have the same rapport that you see with their Div 1 teams right now. I think Poseidon's Kiss has that chance to kind of get in the playoffs. They have a little bit more to work with. Skills Bees, you're right. They've been jinxed the entire season with how they've lost these games this season by Crazy. one or the last play, Crazy. whatever it is. So I think Skills Bees are going to run out of racetrack. I think besides kids can jump in there. It's a question of who between Bless Up and Run It Once will lose at least one more game, if not two more, who knows, at that point. Yeah. So we'll find out for that. Stoics, big win over Run It Once. Are we buying the stock or are we dumping the stock? They're 4-4 four and four in the six hole right now. Okay, so the way you phrase this, you got to buy stock in Stoics now. This is a team, multiple calling the audible episodes where you have Jeff Rosenblatt calling in from his car, going to a meeting and saying, I love you, Chris. I love you, Chris. I love you, Chris. But, 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 and look where they are right now, sitting at the, the sixth seed, four and four. Four, again, reminder, four and four is not a bad record in Division Two. That is actually a great record, given that this Division Two, there was one thing, and there was multiple things Jeff was right about, but this Division Two is a stacked one. And so for you, like you had to buy low on the Stoics two weeks ago because right now sitting at four and four, a huge win over Run It Once. That's a team uh, that's rising stock that you wanted to have bought stock two weeks ago. All right, quickly here, Iggy, because we're running out of time for, for the divisions that we have to get through. Yeah. Right now, Cat Friendly Braves, Sound Ticklers, Mangoose, they're all top three, one, two, and three. Is the three-horse yeah. race for the title, or are we going to see someone else from the other part of the division make this a conversation? I want to say that a team can jump in there, but no. These three teams, there's – and even the Ticklers-Mangoose game, right? Uh, it was, they played each other, and that's the first loss of the season for Mangoose. Uh, and, you know – it's not close when it's a two possession game and that's what it was. Um, you can even argue that this is a two horse race as boring as that might sound. Uh, there's some interesting, you know, connotations and, and background to that to say that cat friendly Braves and silent ticklers. It's like they're going to the finals because there's so many good teams. I, like, like I just said, but I really do think it's, it's, it's like these three teams, Two of them are going to the finals. Okay, 4A, 4B. Uh, LOE, Trap Stars, Backfield Penetration. They're 1, 2, and 3 right now in 4A. LOE will play those two teams, Trap Stars and Backfield Penetration. If they beat them both, are they the team to beat going through the playoffs? I mean, they've kind of been the team to beat in general in, uh, in Division 4A. And so... No, even if you beat Trap Stars and Backfield Penetration, no, they were already the team to beat. And that's why it was such a, a, a hot topic when MoFos beat them because it raised questions and it opened up the division for the number one and number two seed like it is right now. Uh, I Take it two steps further, Mo. 
Balls Deep and Idaho Utapims enter the equation as well because those two teams will play each other. And I believe Idaho, I'm just uh, play Trap Stars as well. Uh, no, I'm wrong about no. that. Play Half Senders FC, Balls Deep, and Nomads. Uh, but uh, all to say that a lot of these top five teams right now are going to play each other. Uh, so if anything, that four and five uh, matchup right now with Balls Deep, Idaho, Utapims will, you know, enter one of those, only one of those teams into the top three discussion. And again, if uh, LOE beats Trap Stars and Backfield Penetration, both those teams have two losses. Idaho will have two losses and and or and or Balls Deep will have two losses. So that number two seed is wide open if LOE does beat uh, those two teams. Fascinating, fascinating stuff for the uh, the top seeds in uh, Division Four. Right? I think all three are excellent. I think all three have uh, holes. I agree with you on that. I think for Trap Stars, it's going to be matchup dependent on the playoffs because they've yes. they've run through everyone. They have a great defense, but they might run into a buzz saw, which you know it can be adjust. And they've done better now of of, of adjusting in game adjustments compared to where they were mm-hmm. say the last couple of seasons. Right. I think LOE is probably the more stable team, less question marks. But again. You know, with Veroa quarterback, we don't know. Maybe he has a glitch during the playoffs. I think backfield penetration, they're the more of the wild card team because they can go any way, right? They can win with their defense. They can win with their offense with that, what they've built up so far this season. Uh, you think about with with Arizona's quarterback, um, which one are you going to get at this point in the season? Like, honestly, if he's the guy long-term, right, which we're not too sure right now, if he's the guy long-term for the playoffs, are you going to go to the bad uh, Alessandro Barazzoni? If you get in the bat, it's a wrap. They're going to be one and done the playoffs here. So there are question marks. But I think for LOE, if they do run the table, I think they have to be anointed as being the team to be because you took out the two top teams in the last two weeks going to the playoffs, and that means something to my bucks going towards the four sure. playoffs. Yeah, um, bigger game this weekend. This weekend's a huge matchup. Balls deep or West Island boys? Bigger for who? No, oh, they're playing each other? They're playing each other this weekend. Uh, interesting. Uh, West Island boys have had the tougher season going four and three right now. Um, but I think balls deep, given that they're playing Idaho, uh, in a few weeks time, I think it's a bigger game for balls deep. Uh, I think West Island boys are the slight favorite. I'd even say not even slight. I'd say they're the favorite in the game. Uh, so therefore, a bigger game for uh, for Balls Deep to prove that they're a, a five and two team, a true yeah, I, five I, and two team. I think West Island boys, it's a bigger game for them because they've underachieved this year. They they've not really found their flow yet, and I think their fluency and language that they have as an offense is fun to watch. And if they were to win this game, West Island boys, they would be five and three, and they would be tied with Balls Deep at least on record and head to head, and that would put them in that conversation for the four spot. I think that's massive. If they were to lose this game. They might fall as low as maybe even uh, uh, number nine, and even lower if the teams have three wins all jump up at some point here. So this is definitely a slippery snake and snakes and ladders a slope for this team here, where they win, they're in that uh, in that elite MVP society of teams. If they lose, they're with the rest of us commoners going towards the final run of playoff games here. So I think it's a massive game for West Island boys and try and win this matchup for them. Um, Undisciplined flaggers or still CRA? Pick one of these teams that could jump into the playoff spot. Uh, good question. I'll have to go with undisciplined flaggers now moving to Dan Mancini at quarterback. Adds a bit more of a surprising element. Uh, and the defense is not bad. Uh, yeah, I'd have to go undisciplined flaggers, but you can hear it in my voice. I'm not convinced. I, I think they are the likely popular pick, but I'm going to stick with Steel CRA. I know Nero Suresh is 21 INTs this year. He's not a quarterback. 21 INTs? 21 that, INTs. What? Okay. I, I but he's not, not a quarterback. I totally right? missed that. But it's like no, Jared Taylor... That. It's like Jared Taylor did one, right? He's not a quarterback. He's a better receiver. And if they had a quarterback to work with, it'd be a lot different. But I'm going to pin my hopes on Steel CRA. I, I think they have a chance here. If they beat Mofos and Half Centers FC, they'll be in the playoffs here and they'll jump someone in there. So give me Steel CRA. And I think the uh, Mapanguara, uh, the Brazilian Mapanguara, Alexander Bacalani, will, will be the reason why they do make a run for a playoff spot. 
uh, to yeah, amount it, to his, of his it would it would have to be it would. The thing is, he can go off for he can finish the season with 800 yards, and it's still gonna rely on Nero Suresh. 21 ints. There's no 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 wonder why they're three and five and they started what oh two and oh. He's like Blake Bortles after Andy and Roche. Like we remember Blake Bortles uh, in the NFL yeah. had 35 touchdown passes and people were like oh my Bad goodness words. you know and. You look at the INTs, right? They they're throwing a lot more because they're trailing games and they have to kind of air it out. Oof, so I oof. think I see your point with back of line being the guy that could eight hundred for the season. All right, um, four B. Um, Mangoose, they're one in six. They're not like they're the big brothers in the higher division. They're one in six. They have three games left. Could they pull off the great escape again in the playoffs? We'd uh we'd have to take a look at their schedule. They have monkeys up next, uh, which they're and gonna scrum, win. And Scrum Diliosis actually has the tiebreak over them because they played. Yes, that is yeah. one of the two victories for Scrum. Um, Mangus have to beat monkeys, and they should. Uh, that game is uh this upcoming Saturday, a big night in uh, the FPF world. Um, they should beat monkeys. Uh, and if they don't, then it's over. So they should pick up two uh, two points there. They then play Team Sexy Tough and X Men even tougher. So, mm, and then if we just go back to the standings and did four B, they'd have four points. Scrum has the tiebreaker. It 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 really comes down to voodoo, uh, because Mangus have 175 points against the 235. But again, Voodoo has played two more games, so they would need to kind of not look. They're going to beat Monkeys, and they will not let up 30 points to them. They need a shutout victory over Monkeys, because in those last two games that we mentioned for Mengus, they cannot let up basically an average of 30 points per game to what was it, Team Sexy and and uh, and X Men, which right. is very possible. Um, and if not 30, 30, 20 to Team Sexy and 40 to X Men, which that too is possible. Uh, versus Fourth and Schlong, uh, Voodoo, sorry, playing Fourth and Schlong. Uh, fourth and Schlong, like I mentioned three weeks ago, you should have been listening to Calling the Audible with me. I anointed Fourth and Schlong to go on a great stretch at t- to end the regular season, and that they have, and that's going to be a win over Voodoo. So Voodoo's going to suffer a loss. They're going to be tied at two and eight. And Mengus, all they have to do is just really, really slow the game down against Team Sexy and against X-Men. Uh, even if they lose, do not lose big. Do not let up points against. Um, they, make, they make it, though. Okay. Uh, Wolfpack Penetrators played a, a thrilling game. Hail Mary win by uh, the Wolfpack. Did we learn more about Ooh. the Wolfpack winning or the Penetrators losing this game? Uh, no, I'm not going to answer your question like that. I think you learn a lot both ways, uh, because I'd say penetrators would have been the favorite in that game. Uh, you learn that the wolf pack can score enough to win a game. Even, even if it's 24, they can score enough to win a game and penetrators. Hey, that, that worries me. You should have put more than nine, uh, than 19 points up on, on the Wolfpack. I, I, I get that the Wolfpack, you just got to avoid Andrew Grant, and they didn't do that. Uh, he came away with an interception, four tackles. Um, you know what? I'll say, you know, I, you know what? I will answer your question. It says more uh, about the Wolfpack. Now, Matt, I didn't see that it was a Hail Mary. Yeah, well, sort of Hail Mary, a uh, 28-yarder to uh, Mason Fleming. Nice, nice. Uh, but that's a bit lucky. That game could have... They, they they should have lost that game, right? It's it's not even a six-point victory. It's a five-point victory. So if you don't get that Hail Mary, it's not like it would have gone to overtime. Uh, you, would have, you would have lost the game. Uh, I'll, I'll, so, again, just to answer your question, I, I say it, it uh, tells me more about the Wolfpack that they can score against a good defense. Uh, and I was just worried about the Wolfpack's offense this season so far. To, to be able to put up... I, 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 I'm not going to say 24. I'm going to say 18 and keep it competitive against the Penetrator says more about the Wolfpack. So the Wolfpack are the third lowest scoring team in this division. Exactly. They're going to have to win their defense, and that's what they did with against Penetrators. I learned more about the Wolfpack because when 
they could have gone up by three scores. They could have gone up by a couple scores on penetrators, and they couldn't do so. They had to rely on their defense. It made it frustrating for the penetrators, who didn't really get going uh, until late in this matchup. And for the penetrators, I know that it wasn't the best game. They'll tell you, they'll, they'll admit they didn't play their best football on Monday. But they have to, the penetrators, figure out uh, a better solution on offense to kind of diversify their palette because – they, I don't think they, they. I know Andrew Grant takes away one side of the football field as as, as he's a fabulous player out there, but I want to see them use the deep ball a little bit more. They, they have players. Capone's a good player on this team. We, we know about Nick Fawn being really good for the Panthers, but I think on the flip side, though, if you are the Wolfpack, I learned more about their defense, but now it's their offense that I want to learn more of because, you know, James Dandrew, who we know very well as a photographer for FPF, um, you put up 160, man, that's not enough in, in seven games. you got to figure out how to score more points because you cannot rely on defense far too often in one game. So I think I've learned more about the Wolfpack that, hey, their offense has to be much more um, of a factor going towards the final few games of the season. Uh, Team Sexy, can they find their appeal before the playoffs arrive because they've not played their best football in the winter season so far? Find their sex appeal or what kind of appeal are we their appeal. Uh, are we their tired of? Playoff, playoff appeal. Um, yeah, what are they? Uh, they're on a two game losing slide right three now, losing four, it back to the future. Four. Three and four overall, yeah, on a two game losing streak. Uh, and they have Wolfpack, Mengoose, and Scrum Diddly. I'm just the last two, uh, should be victories, um, and should be, you know, conf, confident, conf, I can't speak, confidence booster games going into the playoffs. Um, the tighter one's going to be against the Wolfpack. Again, you're going to learn a, a little bit of, a, in that game uh, as well. What's the question? Can they find their appeal before yeah. the playoffs? Yeah, like, yes. So the answer is yes. They're, uh, the confidence booster in the April 6th and April uh, 8th games to uh, to round out their season. Yeah, again, like you said, the and as uh, my dog wants to join the conversation here, um, the uh, FPF playoffs are all about who's hot at the right time, who's hot offensively at the right time. So getting, you know, trying to get 40 points, not maybe not having the mission of, of having 40 points, but just going in the mission to ha- be efficient and scoring on every drive um, will naturally lead to 40 points. Um so try and do that against Mangoose. Try and do that against Scrum Diddly Umptious. They should be successful. Should see, you know, 30-plus points in both of those games. So those should be uh, where the, the games where they find their sex and uh, scoring appeal. Yeah, I, I think they'll find their appeal the last two games. I think they might be in a in a, a number 7-8 range for the playoff scenes right now. Or 8-9. Eight, 8-9 nine. Eight, nine is where I think they'll finish. So I think they'll be okay. I, I think um, quarterback play will be fine. It's more about finishing off games, and if they can do that, they'll be fine. They'll find their appeal as they once had in the Fall Cup and, and maybe be a thorn and be a, a, a surprise team that can come through with one or maybe two playoff wins as well going towards uh, that portion of the season. Uh, quickly here, Iggy, um, this, this question will save maybe for later on in the season here because there's still one or two games left here. But Jacob Salve right now is running away with the quarterback of the year award. Uh, 48 touchdowns, 7 9 tees, um, near 67% passing, almost 2,000 yards passing. It's more by Jeff Marquis, right? He's got two games left, 41 touchdowns, 7 9 tees, three sacks. Almost identical numbers from that perspective here. Yeah. If Salve, whatever, let's say if Salve puts up three more touchdowns, could Marquis make a run of it and maybe get himself back in that quarterback of the year award, or is this Salve's lose? So the short answer is no, but the the more analytical and like reasons behind it's that. It's going to be quick here, Iggs. <laughs> because if, if if JF, even if he puts up six touchdowns, no INTs in his next game, yeah. he's then pretty much tied with Jacob in terms of everything else except the yards. There's like 500 yards he needs to make up. You cannot get 500 yards in one game. So – They'll be equal across the board on everything. And J- Sadve will have like 250 to 300 more yards. And at that point, it's a, it's a moot point. They're, he's going to have 
the quarterback of the year based solely based on that. Right. And he probably has more rushing yards than uh, than him if we do a quick search on uh, on Jacobs uh, rushing numbers. Uh, you know what? Not as much as I thought. Only 44 yards uh, to Marquise. Uh, I'm gonna you know think he's not have a lot of right. I am wow. Not so. I was surprised by that. 114. Uh, so actually double the rushing yards. Still, it doesn't matter. It's a moot point. Uh, just because of the passing yards, Salve, uh, uh, j- j- again. And and that's if he has a 6 TD, 0 INT game. So right. the answer is no. Okay, 5A, 5B. Uh, massive win for uh, for Vice City over LPC. So was it a bigger win for Vice City or was it a bigger loss for LPC, given that LPC was undefeated up until their loss to Vice City? Yeah. Uh, I'll answer it in two different ways. It was a bigger win for Vice City's playoff uh, clinching scenarios. Agreed. But it was a bigger loss for Le Pizquera's morale going into the playoffs. That's that's one that they, they thought they had in the bag. Uh, probably, you know, going in, oh, it's a 4-3 and three team. We're 8-0. Oh, uh, we, we got this. And But it's a more important loss for Le Petit it's better that this game comes now and those thoughts of, oh, we, we got this in the bag, so to speak, uh, that that you don't have those going into the playoffs because, you're as they know, playoff uh, roads get increasingly difficult as they go along. And, and if, if you have that mentality in round one of the playoffs, you could see an upset like they did uh, against Vice City. Well... I think it's massive for Vice City because two weeks ago they were on the danger danger line of not qualifying for playoffs. But now I think they've done enough to get in at least as a low end seed, uh, with the way it's shaping up. And you know Vice City's had some tough games. I think Max Burrow's been phenomenal for them, but that's been it for them. I think for the LPC, it's a loss. Yes, get out of the system. Great, you're still in first place. You control your fate for the number one seed going towards the final game of your season. And for LPC, uh, that final game will be against uh, the Bandits which won't be an easy matchup for them. That we can attest to. So mm-hmm. I think it was massive, and I agree with you on that playoff win for Vice City because, again, Eggies, if, if they lost that game, they might be in trouble. And now they're, they're not. They, yeah. they give themselves a bit of a, a, of, a, of, a, of a reprieve now to be okay for the playoffs uh, going towards the final two games of the season. Um, the final playoff spots. Mm-hmm. Could it come mm-hmm. down to the last game of the year – between Rude Boys and Thunder Buddies who will play each other on the last day on April 13th? I don't think so. I think the way the season's shaping out, and we talked about that last week, that it could be, and it still could be, but I don't think it it will be, uh, especially because Super Troopers uh, just took a, a surprising loss to Ski Yi 20-18 to 18, uh, yeah. this past week. Uh, so that put a dent into Super Troopers' uh, chances. Uh, where's Ski in all of this? Three and four now, so they got a big win uh, as well. Uh, again, Thunder Buddies, I wasn't worried about. Uh, they got the big victory over Vultures, 39-6. to six. Uh, And like I said, they, they are playing Super Troopers, Pasta, and Rude Boys. They could potentially go 3-0, and so I'm not worried about them. And then from the Rude Boys side of things, uh, they're sitting at three and five playing Step Brothers, uh, which they should win, uh, and they are probably going to take the loss to Thunder Buddies. Uh, th- still, a win over Step Bros uh, pretty much guarantees their uh, their playoff uh, position. I think it's going to come down to the last game. I think Rude Boys are going to glitch up at some point, and it might be the really? Step Bros game, and that might cost them dearly. I think Ski's fine, amazing, had the only scored 121 points so far in the That's season. That's crazy. Uh, it's wild to think about that, but I think that in hindsight, that buddy's rude boys game on week, whatever, 20 of the season, I don't know what week we are at this point, um, will determine their fates. And I think Thunder Buddies will be okay, but I think for rude boys, they are in trouble. I think they are kind of on thin ice right now, uh, going towards the final two games of the season. This has been an inconsistent routine this season. We know about them for the last couple of years that they've been involved with FPF, but they've not found that, that, um, that synergy required that uh, that super sonic like gas that could help them, and now they put themselves in a position where yes they, they control their fate, but 
if they lose that game to Step Bros, they're in trouble going towards that game against yeah. Thunder Buddies. Okay, Iggs, uh, we're going to do uh, safe or endangered. There's one word answers right yeah. now for these teams who are in that yeah. bubble that could make it that co- that may not make it. Gotcha. Rico Riders, safe or endangered? Safe. I agree. I think they're safe. I think they have with four games left. They make a run of it here. Uh, in and out. Uh, safe. Safe. I'm going to say safe, but those two ties yeesh, could really hurt their, yeah. their playoffs. Concerned, so. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pasa Arabiat. I'm like in the safe boat, so they, they join. I think they're in danger. Mm. I think they're in danger. Controversial. Yeah, I, I think they might sli- I think they, they'll qualify, but they, it's going to be the, the long way out uh, to get into the playoffs. Oh, wait. I, uh, safe or in danger? I thought this is for playoff positioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they're in danger. I think they're in danger because mm. they can fall behind here, and if they do lose out, you know, one of these teams can jump in there, man. They're only mm. they're only two points up on Super Troopers right now for, from, from yeah, where yeah, they are, 11 yeah. to 17. So yeah. something to look at here right now. Uh, Notorious CIG. I, I, I'm just everyone's joining the safe boat. They're they're they 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 have a life raft and they're on it. Okay, ski ye. I got them as safe as well. Uh, CIG ski ye. Uh, uh, th- that's a team that's in danger for me with that that low point four total. I think they're in danger. I, I think they're in that conversation that they're going to be the fight for the playoff spot. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about them briefly uh, before. Rude boys, Thunder boys. I have Rude boys in danger. Thunder boys as safe. What about you? Uh, I went. Through the analysis just now with you, I think both teams are safe. Okay, uh, I I think one is in danger. That's uh, Root Boys. Okay, five uh, B Iggs as we move along here. Um, sleeping All Stars. Are you in on this team? Yes or no? Sleeping All Stars or retired All Stars? Retired All Stars. Sorry, I, like I'm I'm sleeping at the wheel here, man. Sorry, I'm gonna say retired All Stars. <laughs> you're the one. You're the one sleeping. I'm fasting. Um, I gotta bring fasting like 20 minutes here. That's why. So, so we we talked about this last week while I was in Toronto. Uh, retired All Stars needed to muddy the water against that Green Monster defense, and that's pretty much what they did. Uh, they got a 24-18 victory out of it, uh, and absolutely need to beat. Uh, well, absolutely, they 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 need to beat uh, Ram Fins to secure a spot. Um, but I think they did enough with the uh, with the Green Monster uh, victory, which they that one they absolutely needed. I think it it helps immensely. Um, it gives them a buffer of two points uh, to work with. If they get a tie, at least I think they're safe. I think they need one more point to be safe, and I'm gonna buy into them that they're 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 gonna get into the playoffs here. And after that, who knows? All bets are off with what they can do. Um, Win Diesel, Pack a Punch, Maccabees. They're the three best teams right now. They're all mm-hmm. undefeated. Uh, mm-hmm. Albeit, though, mm-hmm. Maccabees in third place by virtue of the two ties that they've had. Do you see any weaknesses with one of these teams? Uh, I'll try and give one weakness per team. Um, pack a Punch, I'm going to say the offense and the quarterback um, experience. Because the quarterback play has been good. But... Mm, uh, we they haven't had you know long playoff runs in the past so the offense uh for me is a weakness because it's definitely not the defense 82 points against yeah when diesel's weakness is their overconfidence let's say uh their their uh, exuberance on the field uh because otherwise they don't have a weakness when it comes to the talent level right of scoring and and playing solid solid defense uh it's their brashness and their overconfidence could you know be a a weakness in their game and uh you know thinking they're better and then uh, getting upset with refs for calls and and getting so they're they're their greatest their own greatest enemy in uh in their uh in the team's dynamic let's let's say uh and then maccabees the weakness I don't know. Uh, that one's uh, that one. I I have maybe uh just it's a bit more blurry for me. Do you have a weakness for uh, Maccabees? I I think for Maccabees, they I like them a lot. Shimi Khan's is is a good quarterback. Um, I'm just curious to see 
against when they have Win Diesel coming up, which will be uh, they play yeah. twice this week, uh, Wednesday and Saturday. Diesel will be the last game for them, and that'll be it for them. They'll be off for two weeks before they play a playoff game, maybe mid-April, whatever it might be at that point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to see them against Win Diesel. I want to see yeah. them compete, and not not just compete, but to win this game. Can they win mm-hmm. this game to send a, a warning shot towards the aforementioned teams on this list here that – we're not going to be a pushover. We're going to be a team to be reckoned with in the playoffs here. I think you're right about Win Diesel. Their, their their confidence is through the roof, and that's fine. You want to be confident as a football team. Yep. And for what it is right now for um, the Pack and Punch, yeah, let's see you do it in the playoffs here. I think they all have the weaknesses, but I think they, they can be covered up fairly well by the strengths that they have going into the final week or weeks of their campaign. Um West Wild West Wranglers or kicking assets could one of them make a late push for a playoff spot? Um, they could. Uh, if we quickly look at the uh, Wild West Wranglers' uh, remaining schedule here, they got Toon Squad and Les Tondeurs, uh, two experienced, well, not easy two teams that. What? Yeah, it's not easy. not easy. One team very experienced in Toon Squad and one uh, talented but newer team in, in Tondeurs. I don't I don't see the 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 wins or ties coming any points coming uh, there and then kicking assets uh, they finish off their schedule but kind of the same thing packing Packers like Les Tondeurs uh, newer ish but very explosive and 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 solid team uh, and pack a punch that we just talked about undefeated so I'd say zero points for both these teams unfortunately uh, they just ran out of ran out of real estate here in, in the final uh, yeah, two games I don't think they have enough to, to to get over the hills for a playoff spot I think they're both going to be the outside looking in at when it's all said and done for sure yeah uh, top G they're five and four are we looking at them as being a wild card team to watch out for the playoffs yes or no by wild card, you need to be more specific because there's no yeah, first could be round a, a dark buys. horse, dark horse that could win uh, around two. Uh, not a wild, okay, a wild card like a Joker card that we don't, yeah. Um, they could be, but man, the offense is, man, they, they they switch quarterbacks on like random drives and random plays and, man, uh, they're 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 their own wild card in and of themselves. Like, who's the quarterback? Stick to one guy. Let them get the reps, uh, create a simple but effective playbook. The defense I like, I like a lot, um, but man, the the wild card is the offense, and just stick to one guy at quarterback. That's okay. Uh, Coed uh, one, Coed two, yeah. and Coed three. Let's let's push through this year, eggs, because I gotta get to Laval right, and like and leave like twenty minutes over here. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Coed one. Uh, odds is easy fun. We'll get a top two seed. Uh, going towards the final weeks of the season with Le uh, nah. and Tony Fish in that two spots. Yeah, nah. They, uh, I'm gonna go like seven percent chance that that happens. Ninety-three percent chance that plenty of fish and uh, Porcine have locked uh, the the one and two seeds here in Code One. I think plenty of fish playing really good. Porcine has really earned their stripes this year. They 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 have earned their uh, pick skin, uh, so to speak, uh, <laughs> of how well they play this season. So I, I think they're gonna be locked in as, as one two. But look, easy W as a three. Uh, if you're if you're in that two spot, you get them at some point in the playoffs here. Perhaps not gonna be easy. So I think that they're gonna be as number three seed, no question about that. Um, looking at the two final two playoff spots right now, zero subs, uh, one point victory over LPP Monday night in Saint Laurent, and what we have right now with ID team and LPP chasing them for the final spot. Is it going to hold serve, or we going to see a change in the diagram of what we have from 6, 7, and 8? Right. So, Zero Sub has won. They they absolutely needed the win uh, that they got over uh, Le Petit Fuck Monday night. Their last game is against Easy Fun, a team that they've already lost to uh, this past uh, in week 3. Uh, 39-13, a big, big loss over Easy Fun. That's going to be tough to, to get a, a point or two out of that so i think it really comes down to looking at the ig team uh with rith taking over at quarterback can they get out uh so wait so hold on they're tied in points with zero sub right now uh did let's just see quickly if they got 
a victory. They lost to zero sub already, so they don't have the tiebreaker. They at least one more point in the following games. So, Mo, tell me if this is going to happen. Party mix, Porcine, or Le Petit Fuck, which that last game, IG Team Petit Fuck, is going to be basically win and you're in. So, uh, do any of them... Uh, Does IG team get a point or two in any of those remaining no, three games? No, 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 no. Wow. No, no, okay. No. Okay. No. So so by that you're saying Pussy Fuck is going to beat IG team. So yeah. Pussy Fuck is going to get there's two points in the bank there. Yeah. Does Pussy Fuck get a point out, or two out of Easy Fun or against Kiss My End Zone? Maybe kiss, no Easy Fun might be the one. Kiss My End Zone no. I think they might get a point from Easy Fun. Okay, so all that being said, Petit Fuck uh, would jump. They That's it. Petit yep. Fuck jumps into the last playoff spot if Zero Sub does not beat EZW, as we yep. see here. So disp- even though as big as big of a, of a win as that was to put them in prime position, uh, it, it might be all for none here. Petit Fuck might jump into, uh, into the playoffs. That's crazy right now as they sit in the eighth seed. Uh, crazy as it is, Jeremy Murphy, can he win two of the year or, and who wins rookie of the year as well? <laughs> you read that so wrong and I love it. It's so, perfect. I, I did write if, but, uh, if Jeremy Murphy wins two way, which it looks like he's on his way to doing who wins, not rookie of receiver the year. Of the year. We don't have that. <laughs> we don't have that yeah. word. I'm who fasting, man. I got 10 more minutes before I bring my fast, man. Let's go. <laughs> I know. I know. So who who wins uh, receiver, receiver of the, the year? year so... Enjoy the year. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> Jeremy Worthy is like the clear cut favorite for two way. Yes. If he wins it, who wins receiver of the year? Because uh, I, Just who wins receiver of the year, excluding yeah. Jeremy Mur- Murphy's name from the list, because once you win an award in uh, in in a division, you cannot win another one. So you got uh, Jerome Hovington with 17 TDs, uh, five yards shy of 500 yards. Is it him? Uh, is it Emerson Peterkin with uh, about 120 more yards, five less TDs, uh, seven more receptions? Uh, right now, it's between those two. So who wins? Right now, if it's if it's those two for you, Mo. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Peterkin right now. The yards are are far superior, and you look at the pass target ratio, a higher clip at 49 out of 55 compared to the 42 out of 58. Yes, mm-hmm. touchdowns favor Jerome Hunton, no question about that. But he's got I'm talking about Peterkin right now. He's got the key numbers in place, and he can jump for for uh, he's got them for receptions. He's got them for uh, percentage points on targets and yards. That's mm-hmm. two out of three. So give me Peter Gins win this award. Uh, fair enough. Uh, the only thing, uh, Jerome Hovington, five two point converts. So ten points uh, coming from uh, from Jerome versus Emerson, uh, just one extra point two. So if ever it got close, uh, Jerome does have the advantage in the extra point uh, conversation here, uh, and. Yes, yards are a little more valuable than touchdowns, but if Jerome can get it closer in the yards, the touchdown lead of plus five is is pretty large. But again, if everything is close and even, Emerson's one less game play does come into the conversation. But again, only if the numbers are pretty much a wash between the two. You then look at the games played. Emerson did it all equally to Jerome, but in one less game. So, yeah, Emerson has a step up right now for sure. Okay, uh, quickly here. Um, right now for Koa 2, if you look at the bottom of the playoff race, um, IGT, IG Team 2, can they get in after a close loss to the Flash? Uh, uh, yeah, I already moved into into Koa 3. Oh, um, we're going to Koa 3 or Koa We'll wrap this no, one up no, with no, no. a quick answer, yes or no. Uh, I what what's the question? <laughs> Could IG team IG team get in after a close loss to Flash? Oh yeah, so right now they're sitting at three points. The first playoff, the last playoff team has four, so they basically uh, they need at least one win. Yeah. I see a win over Ball Hard, so that's that jumps them into the spot, and then uh, a, a a tie or win against Team Meow Meow which is definitely possible, solidifies their spot. So I think they actually, right now, sitting on the outside, 
actually have a pretty good chance of making the playoff. I'd Kawhi say three, uh, block, Kawhi three block party. They're, they have a one three record in the last four, uh, beating half and half a uh, key game in their season to make a statement for the playoffs. Yes or no? Uh, it, it's a must win, not in terms of making the playoffs, but in terms of showing the division and proving to themselves that they are an upper echelon team in Kawhi three, one that could, could reach the finals. If they get blown out by half and half, Man, you're you're you'd be sitting at one in four in your last five, and uh, there's little confidence uh, going into the playoffs. Lastly, perfect strangers uh, play a key role in how the bottom of the standings turn out um, in terms of playoff eliminations, all that stuff. Uh, how do we predict how this will play out for the final weeks of the season for the bottom half co at three? Right. So you got basically show me your TDs and Flamingos fighting for the final spot. Show me your TDs have nine have played nine games. Their their last game uh, is against Perfect Strangers. Uh, I don't see them beating that. Uh, that still, uh, even though with a one and nine record has them right now in the final playoff spot. That means Flamingos with three games remaining would need at least one win. So Mokan, let's go through it quickly. Are they getting a win against Agridu? No. Are they beating at least we tried an undefeated team right now in no. Core 3? No, no, no. And so therefore, again, it really comes down to this perfect strangers. That's why they play such a key role. Do Flamingos beat perfect strangers? No. no. So... Basically, the uh, I, I think that's the one game there's a chance that Flamingos do it. It would be against Perfect Strangers. It's still like a 25% odds, 20% odds that they do that. Um, still, uh, I think the the way this shakes down is the way you see it uh, right now. Yeah, so Flamingos, again, There's we still have to wait till that final game. There is a slight chance Flamingos can win that game, but we'll have okay. to see. Okay, we powered through here, Iggy. I gotta break my fast in like five minutes, my friend, and get to the Laval. Awesome. We we did it. You did it, we did it. We did it, man. We yeah. did it. We did it together, you and I. Coughing my way through, you watching, you eat crackers in front of my face, virtually speaking here. Uh we did it, man. Without 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 our boy, the Nightingale, Ali Rez now on with us, but Omar coming in in the clutch for us as usual. Thank you, Omar, yeah. for your job well done. Um, final two weeks of the season here, guys. Check out the playoff uh schedule. It's out and about. Spring registration will open up. Uh, next week, next week at some point. So get ready for that. And the season will begin May weekend, May 11th, 12th, whatever is that Sunday is a lot of options here. Loyola, uh, Laval, a couple of times a week, Brossard. We got, uh, Maddie Simon, Vic. yeah, Mary Vic as well. Papineau, I think as well. So we got, we got five we got on here. five, six on six, six, on six. You, it's like, a, it's like a buffet of options for you this uh, summer to look at, you know, look good, feel good, be outdoors, indoors, whatever you want. We have it all for you guys. Eggs, uh, thank you so much, as always, for the big show. We'll be back together again for playoffs. Yeah, the playoff. Uh, playoff, playoff. We'll do a couple of big shows. For final, well. final, final seedings here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, did three. Yeah, lastly, did three playoff um, unveiling format will be done in the coming weeks. So keep your eyes open for that. Stay tuned for Instagram stories and all that. And we'll have it through Iggy at some point in the coming week or so. Uh, Magic words, please, Iggy. You know, Mo, I don't do that. Uh, good night, March Madness. We'll see you soon. Put the place up. Yeah, we know what we made of. Can't get enough for you, boo. I'm a chaser. Face up. Now I feel a little major. Blink up an eye. Ego, I'm a taker. Shaker. Yeah, she was a ball shaker. She shaked me out that door to no place. Damn, why you doing all that? Thought you was my wife, but you stabbed me in the back. Something like a rose. Smell